Hi, Shelley from Spin Cushions here. Today I've got to do a quick video showing you how to make traditional granny square my way. Um, you can find the pattern on my blog for free in an ebook form that shows you every step of the way. It's called Granny Square Crochet for Beginners. Free to download and it has photos of every single step I'm going to show you here today. Right, so starting off, I'm just going to show you how to make initially a single colour one. After I finish that I'll show you how you can change colours. So, to start off, you need some yarn and a hook. Just um, use whatever hook size is recommended by on the yarn label. And we're going to attach our yarn to our hook with a slip knot. Now I do that by crossing the yarn over like that. Turn my fingers over, poke your hook underneath the front loop, pull that front one, that back one to the front, and then see those two things through the circle? pull both of those until it's tight on your hook and then just pull one and there you go you've joined your yarn with a slip knot. Now to start off a granny square you need a circle to work into to start off with so how we're going to make that circle is we're going to chain a number of stitches and then we're going to join those chains into a loop. So the first thing to do is make sure you've got the right end the one that go into the ball now you can see me, I've got my finger on that loop that, that is there. I'm going to wrap my yarn over my hook from the back to the front. Then pulling down a little bit on this stitch, I'm going to pull that loop through there. And that is one chain. Now I'm not going to pull it tight. You should always work on this fat part of your hook, not on this thin bit. It'll be too tight. Next one. That's two. Now in my ebook. And instructions I say to chain four. But when you're doing your very first one I would say do six because it'll give you a bit more to work with. So that's one, two, three. Yarn over and pull through. Right, so we've got four chains. One, two, three, four. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke my hook into this first chain. It doesn't matter where, anywhere will do. Then with this yarn that's going back to the ball Put, put it over the hook and pull it through both of those little loops. Pull it through the chain and then pull it through that last one. Now it doesn't look like much but there really is a loop. Can you see in the centre there? That is the hole we're going to be working into. So there we go, we've made our chain we're going to start working with. Now to make a granny square you use the same stitch all the way around. Now this stitch is called a treble crochet in UK terms or a double crochet in US terms and it's you work, work it from the top down so for our very first one we have to actually work up to this height before we can start working the next stitches so the first st stitch at every round we're going to do chain three that's going to take the place of our first stitch so here we go again make sure you've got the right one going back to the, the ball. So chain one, chain two, chain three. Okay, so that's our pretend first treble stitch. Now this is how you make a real treble stitch. You put your treble crochet UK or double crochet US I should say. You wrap your yarn over your hook as if you're going to do a chain, but instead of doing a chain, you poke your hook into the middle of that circle then you snag that yarn from the back and pull it to the front and if you pull it up a little bit you'll see you've got three loops on your hook now. Now to finish off we put our yarn over again we pull it through two loops one, two then you put your yarn over again and pull it through those two loops. Okay so there we've got our first treble crochet UK, double crochet US, our first stitch. So this is our pretend first stitch, this is actually our second stitch. Now can you see that each of these groups of stitches, there are three stitches. So whenever we're doing a granny square we work three stitches together in the one spot. So we've done two, remembering that chain three is our first one. So we need to do another one to make our first group. And you can see once you've made your first stitch that hole becomes really a lot easier to see. Sorry, I'll slow down. <laughs> so, yarn over from the back to the front over your hook, poke it in the hole, 
snag that yarn from the back and pull it to the front. You've got three loops on your hook. Yarn over from the back to the front, pull it through two loops, and then do that again. Yarn over through two loops. So there's our first group of three. Now in the very first round in the center, you see there are four groups of three stitches. What you can't see hidden underneath these next round stitches are two chains. That chain two turns the corner in our granny square. So that's what we're up to here. We're going to chain two. Yarn over and back to the front. One, two. Then we're going to work three more stitches in that same big hole. Yarn over, pull a loop up, get three on your hook, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. And we need to do two more stitches. Now the first couple of rounds are a bit fiddly and a little bit different to the other rounds. Once you've gone past round two, it becomes a real breeze. So I've done two stitches, I need to do one more. Okay, so that is now two groups of three with one little corner. So just like I did three stitches, two chain, I've done three stitches, now I need to do two chain. One, two. Okay, now I need to do another group of three. So can you see that that tail from the very beginning, I'm actually crocheting over that as well. It just makes it a little bit easier to hide a bit later on. So one, Two, three. So now I've got three groups of three. One, two, three. So after a group of three, I do two chain. And I've got one more group of three to do. One, three. So there you go. Can you see four groups of three? I've got four groups of three. And that I'll explain why that circle is really small a bit later on. That's just a trick I use. But yours will probably look a little like this. So what we need to do, we've got one, two, three, four groups of three. We've got one two chain spaces, two, three two chain spaces. We need another two chain space to finish off this round. So chain two. Now we're going to finish this round, we're going to end it off and then we'll start the next round. So we do that by joining to the top of our third chain. So it's a bit tricky to see. Can you see there's like little V's? That's the first chain, that's the second chain, that's the third chain. We're just going to poke our hook into that top of that third chain, that back loop, and we're going to pull the yarn from the back through that loop and through that loop. Let's take my hook out and see. So there we go, we've got our first round of our granny square done. Now, let's have a look at the second round, this colour here. So you can see we had four groups of three here. In this next round, we've got two groups of three, two groups of three, two and two. So we've got eight groups of three around our granny square and in between, under here we've got two chain and in between over the top of these single ones we've got one chain. That's where we're going to be working into from the third round around. Don't worry, I'll explain all of that as we go. So we're actually going to start off with a stitch here and we're going to work that, that group of three then we're going to group those, 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 and we're going to come back and finish off with a group of three back here, and then we'll join up here. Okay, so remembering our stitches are tall stitches, so for our first one we need to do a pretend one or chain three. It's called a starting chain. One, two, three. Now we need to do two stitches back in this big hole here. We've kind of worked backwards a little tiny bit. Okay, so in that big hole, we're only working into holes when we make a granny square. So yarn to the front, through two, through two, and another one. Remembering our first group of three, 
in a granny square round is always going to be chain three then two stitches so that's our first group of three now to get over to the next space we're going to do one chain I know it doesn't seem like much but that that little gap is where we're going to work our next round stitches now into this big space here we're going to work three stitches Whoops. one two three now we're going to chain two chain two which goes around the corner but now we're going to do three stitches back in that same hole if you have a look here you can see the base of those six that group of three and that group of three are all in that same space that's what we're doing so I've got my yarn over poke it in to that same big hole and do one two, three. So that's our first corner done. So corners in granny squares are three stitches, two chain, three stitches, all in that same corner space. That's the corner space we'll be working into next time. Okay, now again to get over to the next space, we chain one and then we do another corner, which is three stitches, one, two, three, chain two, and then three stitches back in that same hole. One, two, three. That's our second corner done. Now we do chain one, then three stitches back in here, one, two, three, chain two, and three stitches in this hole. One, two, three. Okay, so we've done our, another corner. So now we do chain one to get over to the next space. Now let's have a look. Can you see I've got three, two, three, three two three three two three in this space here is where we started we've already done three stitches so to finish off this corner we need to do three stitches in this same space we did our first stitches one two three now, the only thing missing is that chain two in between the two groups of three in that same space. Chain two. And now we're going to finish off this round by joining to our third chain. That's the first one. That's the second one. This is the third one. Let's poke it through. This is called a slip stitch. And pull it through both of those. Okay, so that's two rounds of our granny square done. These two. So now we're up to this round. Now, this is where it becomes a normal granny square and everything is pretty much the same from here on in. We've got the same corners we just did, three stitches, two chain, three stitches in that corner space. Then we've got a one chain space to get over and in, in the one chain space from the round below we're going to work three stitches. We do one chain, then we do a corner in the corner. One chain, three stitches all the way around and as we go for progressive rounds you just do an extra group of three along each side. So the next round's got two groups of three on the side with the corners and then the next round after that we'll have three one two three plus the corners so let's go again we do our pretend stitch to start our standing chain one two three now our first two you go backwards into this big hole back here that's our second stitch of our group of three and our third Okay, so now we have to get over to this space. So to move over, we do one chain. Then we do three stitches in this big hole here. One, two, three. Then we do one stitch to move over to the next side bit 
and this is our corner. This is where we do three stitches, two chain, three stitches in this hole. Two, sorry, I keep hitting the camera with my hook. Three, chain two, and then three stitches in that same hole. One, two, three. Now we chain one to move along to here, where we do three stitches here. One, two, three. Now we do chain one and we're back at the corner again where we do three stitches, two chain, three stitches. One, two, three, chain two, then three stitches in that same hole we just worked into. One, two, three. Okay, so now we're up to one chain, three stitches here, one chain, corner. I'll come back when we're about here. I'll just pause it and I'll work on and meet you back there. Okay, so I've done my last corner, chained one, three in that middle space. Now I need to chain one again. And I'm going to finish off by working back into the same place that our first stitches were in. So I'm going to do three stitches in here. One, two, three. Now I just need to chain two and join up with the third chain. So that's one, two, three. Pull it through, pull it through. Okay, so that's how you do your basic granny square. So the next time around, we'll be doing groups of three into these spaces as well as corners in our corners. Now, if you ever get lost, my tip is pop it down flat on the table, find your corners, pull them out, and you can hopefully that will help you see where you're up to. If you're having trouble finding where the corners are, where to do those corners, when you're finished around, grab some scraps of yarn and just poke them through. Oops. You can even tie a little knot if you want. So that you know when you get there, that's when you have to do the three stitches, two chain, three stitches in that same space. Okay, so now let's have a little look at changing colours and finishing off. So let's say I'm going to change out a new colour here. I'm going to snip off my yarn. Now I'm on the back now, that was the front where we just finished. I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to fold that loop down over the tail we just snipped off. And I'm sort of put my fingernail there and pull it tight down towards the centre. Now, to start a new colour. There's a couple of ways you can do it. This is the most, the best way for re real beginners. Find a different corner to where you ended off. That's where I ended with that tail there. Just grab your new colour through a corner space, pull it to the front, oops, and then just do a little, sorry I'm having trouble finding my end, like a little chain there and pull them both tight, pull both ends tight. So that's just anchoring your new colour. Now you're just going to start crocheting like you've been doing before. We do our starting chain of chain three. One, two, three. And then we do two stitches back in this space. Go over that little end a bit. Two. Okay, so that's our first group of three done. So now I need to chain one and I'm going to work into this space, three stitches in here. Now, can you see this tail here? Don't be tempted to crochet over it like this. I'll do it and I'll show you why not. Um, two, three, 
chain one because that tail is now visible if it moves around. On the back it's really visible and it's also really loose. It can be pulled out quite easily. So it doesn't look very good, so I'll show you how to deal with that end in a moment. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, so we just continue our granny square as normal. So now we're doing a group of three in the next space. And chain one to get to the next space, and this is a corner where I'm going to do three stitches, two chain, three stitches. Oops. Crikey. <laughs> One, two, three, chain two, and three stitches in here again. One, two, Okay, I'll meet you back here and then I'll show you what to do with the ends. Okay, here I am back almost at the start. I've done my last group of three along the side. I need to chain one to get to the corner. Then I'm going to finish off this corner by doing three stitches in here. One. Two. Three. Now I'm going to chain two and join to the top of my third chain slip stitch oops try that again okay now I'm going to cut that color off Just fold it through okay so Crochet has a definite front and back. You may not see it when you're first beginning, and that's okay. Um, but this is the front, and you can see these things are kind of twisted around each other. Can you see there's little twists, little almost plaits? When you have a look on the back, it's more like lots of bumps. There's more sort of horizontal lines and vertical lines on the back, whereas on the front, they're more um, vertical and are twisted around each other. Anyway, don't worry about that if you can't see that as yet. So now you need to know what to do with these ends. Now, at the very end, I'm picking up the end from the very centre, threading my yarn needle, and just continue around the back through those nice thick stitches. You can pull it a bit tighter if you wish to pull up that hole. Now go backwards the other way but go over that last one you came out of. Sorry this is a bit awkward through the camera. Pull it through that way. This way, if you have a long enough tail, you can go up through stitches and around through those bits. I'm just going to go back the other way again. <coughs> Pardon me. And I'm going to snip that off. Okay, so that's the centre end dealt with. Now, let's have a look at the last of the blue ones. So we finished up the top here. I'm going to thread my needle. I like to have little rules for myself about sewing in ends. I, if I can help it, I won't sew it under a different colour. I will just sew the end under the same colour. So to do that, I'm going to go through the back of these stitches till I get down to here. Pull that through. Then I'm going to go under these little, I call them legs, here at the back. Pull it through this way. I'm going to go over the first one and go underneath all of those. 
And if you want it to be really secure, you can go down through other stitches and back around those things. I'm just, this is just a sample for me, so I'm just going back a couple of, few times backwards and forwards like that. I haven't got enough yarn to go further. You can split the yarn and sew in the split bits differently if you like. So that's that end sewn from the top down. Now, from the beginning where we started our new colour, it's fairly simple. Thread your needle and just like we did when we, after we went all the way down, just go over the first one, go through. over the first one, back through, trying not to split anything, <coughs> excuse me, okay, um, if you, I'll show you how you can go through the back of stitches if you want, but I don't like to do this because it sort of adds a bit of bulk to your stitch, so go up through the back of stitch and then come back down through another stitch and then you can sew it along again. You just keep sewing backwards and forwards up and down until you're finished weaving in ends. Oh and when you're snipping them off just pull it up slightly and snip off sorry perspective <laughs> through there. Snip and then when you pull it out, that little end will poke in underneath there. So there you have it. Um, the granny square. Now with your ends, I would recommend sewing in your ends every time you change colour. Um, I would also recommend not doing lots of small squares with a different colour every round. Unless you really like sewing in ends. Because two, four, six, that's eight ends in this little tiny granny square. But anyway, there you go. I hope... You have learnt everything you need to know to make a granny square. If you want to learn how to do a few little of my ticks, trips, tricks and tips, um, have a look at my magic circle video to show how to get a really tight centre. Have a look at my false treble or false DC so you don't have to do that starting chain. Or read my seamless crochet tips on uh, my blog. So there you go. Everything you need to know, I hope. See you later.